This presentation, I wanted to do it because I'm not new, new, but I'm work, I have been working about two months with the Knative community, so I'm not as experienced as everyone. But this is something that caught my eye since the day one that, that I tried to learn the Kubernetes and Knative ecosystem. So basically... Yeah. Gabriel, what sorry I... to sorry to disturb. Could you just click on yeah. the dialog window uh, oh, for? Sure, sure. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Carry so, on. I'm sorry. Let... No problem. So let me tell you a little bit about me. For those who don't know me that well, I'm Gabriel Freites. I'm a computer science engineer from Venezuela. I'm currently working at VMware and Bogota, and my my social media is Gabillo Illo, at Gabillo Illo in Twitter, Instagram, and I think Facebook too, but that nobody uses Facebook now, so it doesn't matter. Basically, uh, what I'm going to tell you is some history that I, I learned about the docs. Uh, Omer and Carlos were very helpful by telling me some of the origins of the docs, why the changes, and what were the, what were the situation before the changes were done. Um, and I have a little, I don't know if surprise, but I'm going to do two demos. One is a basic, simple one of a of a first contribution for any new contributors that want to join or, or want to see this video or you want you folks want to share this video to anyone interested in doing his first contribution onto a, an open source project you can do you can show this demo and the second one is a community feature uh, done by paul that is a super cool installation script for knative and it's the kind of things that uh, makes a project grow and the community to be like uh, proud of the of some of the in of the folks in there so basically that's the risk uh, the toc and i'm i'm going to start talking about this so a little bit of history the first page that that i saw at least of the kennedy documentation was uh, made in yugo it was a page that really the ui is UI spec wasn't that bad. It was a really uh, a standard documentation page. It was, I, 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 for me at least, it was pretty nice. But the problem where where light be, because when you went to search some for some content, a specific content, you got lost. There were too many links, too many things where to start, and you don't, didn't know like, okay, I'm I. I'm new on this technology. I don't want like to read all the documentation, like to start doing things on my own. I want something to point me in the, in the right direction to start uh, like developing my career on Knative or and the, and the ecosystem, or to start building something myself. And that was where the main problem was like. And in Yugo, that was pretty clear. Also, Yugo like made a little bit more difficult to make some changes. Uh, it didn't have a, like a search bar, a lot of features that maybe you as a person who has been working on Knative for five months, a year, two years, is not that important to you. But where, when you are new to Knative and you want to start learning, you need that the entry point that in this case is the page to be good and to be pretty concrete on what to learn, what to teach the people that are seeing it. So basically, talking to Omer and to Carlos, they pretty much uh, told me the same thing. Uh, MK Docs, that was the other option that they were managing. And aside from Yugo, the, it came with more out of the box uh, features and things that made easier the the life, not only for the user, but also like the contributor to change to do some changes on the website to start contributing. Uh, without having to learn Go, because you go the the thing that mo that caught my eye the most about it is that claims to be the fastest fastest content site static content site generator, uh, and is based on GoLang. That is cool, but not all the people that is going to work on the project had to know GoLang, and Python is like a more friendly entry point for the new contributors. So. That being said, uh, these are like the main reasons to change from Mogul to MKDocs. And 
I'm going to show you like how it was before the MK Docs were implemented. Uh, we are going to go to the live page because this is currently in production. And then we're going to compare it to the new page on MK Docs that I think is a great step up, but you guys are going to be the judges uh, during the demo. So basically this is just an image. So you can see how is the basic template of the old Yugo website. This is done with Yugo. This is the Knative current on, uh, at this day on production site. And this is the new site, a little bit more catchy to the eye. And since this image, you can see that it already has a, has a getting started guide, administration guide. It has like all the points that you want to search if you're a newbie on the on the Knative um, ecosystem, you want to be an administrator or you you just want to develop an application using some of the of the already present tools. So this was possible because in the community there one thing that I saw is that there is constant communication on the forums, on the Slack, on the mails, these these meetings and the meets on the DUX uh, working group and other event in serving all of that. And that it's key, I think, to to progress as a tier community as a and to make your product grow with the community that had a name, but in the later slides, we will, we will see how it goes. Uh, one thing that Omar told me is that they had like a roadmap, but it wasn't like a super clear road one. It was like, okay, we need to do this, but we don't know exactly how to do this in some points, but we need to start working. So the the best way that they did it was to define, define clear issues, needs and features. And they, uh, they transform that into milestones. And with that, the community could start like working, helping me included. We had like a clear path to follow even when I, I had like some weeks into the projects I and I didn't have like the whole context. So that was pretty helpful for the for the project per se. And of course, without the community, this will be would have been more slow, more painful, and we need the community to grow because this is the work of all, basically. How this is called? This is called community led development. And I'm sure most of all, most of us here are like familiar with this concept, but bringing some little data. Um, I was a front end in my old job, and I saw like the React popularity growing up versus the Angular, Angular JS, and even the view starting to grow up as I, I, I was drifting away from from it, and that was probably because the community was like searching for something new, something simpler, something that was more adaptive to their needs than the things that were were before. And this graph showed that exactly. React has one of the biggest community in the current front end framework repos with 170k stars and 30k repo forks who has the lead currently with repo stars but has a little less repo forks. And Angular and Angular JS are basically a thing of the past that are declining on the usage and all of the community focus attention. And that is why the community is so important in, the, in this kind of projects, frameworks, uh, because they let the where the product goes and how long the product lives. So after that, uh, before this, I want to show you the both of the websites, the current websites, and then we will do a quick first step demo on contributing to open source, uh, specifically into Knative. So basically here I have the old website. As you can see, it's nothing that is ugly. It's not a bad website, but the problem relies when you click on documentation and you don't have like a clear way to start and building something with this. I, you can install it, install it, upgrade it. Okay. but after that, you don't know what is serving, eventing. Uh, you have some code samples, but you don't know exactly like, okay, what do I have to do with this that I have already installed? And here I have the new, the new site 
it's a little bit more catcher to the eye. I like it uh, a lot um, because I have work in this, so it's a little bit of cheating, but I really, I really enjoyed working on this because I think it's a clear improvement from the old site. And you have all these elements that jump into the eye like, okay, getting started, let's see what we can do. And before you begin, you have to install it, you have to have a cluster. So it gives you more details since the first moment for you to know like what to do exactly in each part, each part of the way into learning Canary. And one thing that you claims that is pretty good in performance is not not a lie, but really this this was the US statistics and these are the MKDoc statistics are not the difference. This is using Lighthouse from Google, a tool from Google that like let you see the performance of a live site. And really MKDocs were on top of these on this test bot, just because I think the site is not uh, finished completely. So they are pretty even into that performance specs. So now continuing with the with the demo, with the first step demo, I have run right now the I will show you how to create a fork from the repo. Here is the repo of the docs. These are the docs uh, from Knative. You search here Knative docs, and you can see like the repo where this website uh, lives lives in. Now you have to create a fork. You create a fork. I already created mine. Mine is called docs one, and then you create locally a branch. Right now I have my branch that is called my awesome feature, and I I have a typo here, as you can see. Basically, you can run um, locally the mkdocs tool that, that will be the ecstat static side and expose it on the local host. And there we can see live how are we changing the, the web page and how it's going to see when we upload it onto the, onto the domain. So basically, here is our typo. We can change it or fix. You can, I know there are some flags that accelerate the, the whole reloading, but I don't have it set up. So that leave it up to you on the documentation. And then when this will reload, this will change to over fix. Already changed it. Now for doing the PR for the first contribution, you go to your fork repo or to a regional one, git auto detects that you have a chain that is not present on the on the current branch. And basically you click here to see if you can do the pull request and they show you all the changes that you have. Of course, before this, you have to go to the community. You have to start like, okay, getting to know the ecosystem, the people and how to how to do it because there's a CLA setup that you have, you have to do before this, but this is specific to this repo. But for any open open source contribution, you can do this basic demo and you can start like contributing uh, right away using GitHub. After this demo, now I have the the pleasure to to tell tell you people that Paul uh, did a, a quick start demo uh, on the installing a script. We currently install Knative uh, using the Kong script that I think Carlos did. It they are they have no problem, but they have like a wget uh, output running directly into the to the terminal that can be unsafe. Basically, this plugin Quick Start uses the Go package management. And it's pretty, pretty cool. It auto detects if you have already a kind cluster running and it offers you to redo it, to delete it, and to reinstall the, all of the tools to start building with Knative or it created from scratch. So basically this, I leave you the, the link of the repo. Here is a repo if you want to contribute in any kind because this is a work in progress. This is not finished. And when you clone the repo, you install the dependencies, you just have to do this kind of quick start kind, and it detects that I have already a Knative cluster. Uh, you call, you say yes, it deletes the cluster, we create the cluster, 
the name Killer Ready Them K Dogs website. And you guys will see that it, you folks will see that it start like installing all that you need to run Knative, that it is eventing, serving the ingress. I think it's now just with the contours uh, ingress for serving, but probably in the future this will change and we have we will have more options to install with this plugin quick serve. Now let's wait for it to install. And this repo could use a good contributor uh, first kind of issues like to complete the readme to start helping with some of the go go menus to have more options. But I think it's a pretty great uh, community uh, built quick start plugin. As we can see, it's creating the kind cluster, the server install, installing the CRDs. It installed the, all the Knative serving. Maybe Paul, when this is more like mature, you can give a good demo about how did you thought about it? How did you create the repo and, and who helped you to implement it after this video? Hopefully more people are going to help you with the, with the little details. One thing that I didn't took in took on account is that WSL2 is like pretty slow to install some things on using a lot of file moving and all of that. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. This is Paul uh, for anyone that don't know him and he is currently on the Knative community. And here are here is the repo thing for anyone who wants to who help him contributing into that. Okay, it's in the memory channel. I think this is where installed contour. And okay, now courier. Courier was the one that that came out of the box with this plugin right now. And that's all. Now you have a Knative cluster. Uh, if you get it on kind, it's created a Knative cluster and it has all the tools needed for Knative to work on that cluster using the, the courier as serving ingress. So thank you all for that. And for the conclusions, basically, uh, in the case of NK Docs, the simpler was the catchier one. So the community has to be specialized on some some of the tooling, of course. But for some things like the docs page, the simpler is the better because more and more people are going to want to contribute to a to a project if they don't have to learn a lot of stuff to to do his first contribution. So and the other point is community is key. Without the community, we are basically nothing. We have to 
grow from the community for the community, community lab development. And also we need to get this product as as hard as we can with the most people, the better. Uh, you should start contributing and learning on interesting projects like this one or any project that you see that you like because the open source community is really a friendly place. And I, I have enjoyed a lot this couple of months that I have been working on here. I'm new to this. I haven't uh, contributed to any open source uh, project before. And really I, ha I have had a great time and met a lot of interesting people on the way. Uh, always propose and communicate. This is key on this because if you don't do this, uh, it can get like pretty chaotic, chaotic on the on the Slack and the community. And yes, uh, build more demos so we we can show them into these meetings. And hopefully, we will have one each month or more. And one thing that Omar told me is to you guys to fill this form so you can help us improve the the demos, the quick start guide, and the serving and the eventing getting started guide. So I will share this link. Uh, probably it's good for the Twitter account to share it also. And well, that's basically it. That's the whole presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it.